Good morning, guys. This is Thursday, and it is time for, I guess you could say, Favorite Cookbooks Part 2. Only right, this time, it's going to be my canning cookbooks. Now, this little baby here is 30 years old. If you are able to get a hold of a vintage canning cookbook, just know that you really need to go over to the uh, ball preserving site. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to set the chair up. I'm going to give you the link for the ball site for its preserving. And you can type in the recipe and it'll pull up a more updated one. Or if you get one of these here. I also have another one. I have this one here. If you get one of these, chances are you're going to find a recipe that's in your vintage book that you either bought or inherited in one of these newer books. Because sometimes um, just little things are different. But, you know, don't throw these out. Keep them. This was my first canning book. Therefore, it will always be in my collection, my ever-growing collection. If y'all could see my cookbook collection, it would blow your mind. Um, you have things like split pea soup that's in here, and it's also in the other book. Now, the reason this is always going to be my favorite it's, it doesn't just go into special diets, um, freezing stuff, dehydrating, but it shows you how to take and combine what you can and put a whole meal together. You've got breakfast items, soups, salad that you could take like, um, your pickled vegetables, and you could do those with. Entrees, apricot, honey, mustard, glazed chicken. You can um, can the honey, mustard, apricot, honey, mustard sauce and use it later. Oh, this is definitely going to be a favorite. It's got ideas for desserts. There's everything but cook the meal for you. Now, fall back the basics. This is another good one. It gives you the difference between the two types of canning. And it gives you a recipe like um, peach jam. Then you have peach rosemary jam. And they give you an idea of how to use it on baked bacon wrap shrimp. Oh, hello. Yeah. Definitely keeping that. Now, I do not have an all American canner. Even though it's a cookbook, the recipes were written for an all American, they work with any canner. Okay, a pressure canner is a pressure canner. It does not matter what name is on it. I happen to have a Presto because that's what Walmart carried it, and that's what I could afford it. There you go. Now, I've done the baked beans. Boston baked beans in here on page 105. Delish. They are so good. Now, I didn't bake them off and then can them. I put the beans in the jars with the syrup and canned them. I knew that I could always go back and bake them off later. This worked out very well. Because I also put on the jars what it was. And I wrote in the book the little logs I keep. Like your regular, um, let me grab one here. Just a regular binder like this here that I used to keep a log on. And I wrote in which book they're from, whoops, and what page it was on. And that helped a lot. So, Still can it keep logs. Just your spiral notebook or one of the composition books, whatever. Writing down what it is. And it helps if you put down the cookbook it came from. 
So you can always go back and look again. This, without a doubt, is my favorite. Hands down wins right here. Miss uh Rosoa Rosoa spent years with the Amish researching and working with them to put this book together. This isn't the only one she did. She also did um just your um home style Amish cookbook. It's also by Georgia was Ferosa, 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 something like that. Anyway, it's early, okay? It's really early. I've been up since like 5.30. Yeah. Anyway, she even has a chapter on Tadler reusable canyons. I haven't read that yet because I don't feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm advanced enough to use this. To use them. Because they're kind of tricky to use because it's very specific ways of using them. Um, Linda from Linda's Pantry, she has a video where she used them and they worked fine. Now, these are a wonderful book. What I really, really like is these here section. I know you can't see it because guess what? It's read, write, notes in. What you liked about something, what you didn't like, what you would change. You can do all that. Now, the thing I've canned in here is their farmer soup. Before I canned, here's the deal. I did like a small test batch. Instead of doing two pounds of hamburg, I did just like a small amount of meat. Small amount of all the vegetables, put it together, see if we'd like it. And that soup is fantastic. Now, we I used kielbasa sausage. It's what I had, I thought, and this was a last-minute deal, so I just put it together. But you know what? They were too. Now, I hope you guys will pick up these books um, or pick up any book. And just start canning. But remember, you can get a vintage book. You need to go to freshpreserving.com. I'll hook you up with a link. Along with links from the other ladies that I've learned a great deal from. And I've watched them for June will be a year. I can't believe it's been a year I've been doing this off and on. Anyway, I hope you will get in there. Get canning. Practice with water. Water, water, water. You can put water in a mason jar. You can use your water bath canner to kind of get an idea of how it's going to work. What the differences are going to be between the water bath canner and the pressure canner. This way you're not wasting food. And you always have water you can use. There you go. Um... Yeah, I think that's it. We're going to stop here and definitely get these books. Get your hands on these books. Even if you go to the library, that's the first thing. Go to the library, check out a cane book, take it home, read it, return it, and then decide. Because it does take quite a bit of time, but it has been so wonderful. It's convenience food that you control. I will see you in the morning.